This is Elizabeth Creamer coming from coming to you from Blacksburg, Virginia on a snowy day, February 2nd, 2018. I come to you to present an overview of chapter four from my textbook, An Introduction to Fully Integrated Mixed Methods Research. This chapter focuses on designs and probably is the last chapter in the book that is so heavily reliant on previous literature, foundational literature. So the overriding purpose of this chapter is really to tread some fairly well uh, populated land and to talk about um, the ways that the designs of mixed method studies have been described and that's usually with language that refers to the timing of the data collection and the priority given to qualitative and quantitative designs or qualitative and quantitative approaches. So there are several goals in the chapter of which I'm not going to go all the way through. I present a classification system which I'll mention briefly um, I do use it in different ways than the core five sets of design that Creswell and Plano Clark have so adequately and well described. I'm going to talk about priority as one of the key ways of distinguishing mixed method studies. I'm not going to review the notation system that's described in the book. Um, I am going to talk about um, an exemplary publication. Um, I'm going to review what a quant, qual, unequal, and mixed priority study might look like. And then I'm going to suggest some new ways to look at designs which I carry forward better, more thoroughly in later chapters. You might ask what do we mean by the word design before we get into these features of design. And the idea of design is that um, Usually it's thought from the onset that as you launch a study, you really have a conceptualization not only of a clear purpose in research questions, but you're proposing a design and analytical set of procedures that are consistent with your purposes. And hopefully your purposes are carried out in your designs, I mean in your publications as well. Sometimes you do see publications where the purpose doesn't really seem to match the analysis and I think that's largely someone didn't rephrase the purpose statement to match the publication. When we talk about research phases, there, research is usually divided into four clear phases. First, the design phase where you establish what I've just talked about, the purpose and the research question the data collection phase, the data analysis phase, which actually can be quite interactive, and the drawing of conclusions. So those four phases, and when integration occurs at all of those phases, then um, I have adopted the term fully integrated mixed methods research to describe them. So in the literature to date, um, there, have been, there has been quite a bit of emphasis on two aspects of designs in mixed method studies. One of those is called priority and the second is timing. There's more attention definitely given to timing um, and it has been conceived largely uh, in the core designs in terms of two phase designs. So timing really refers to um, whether it's a two-phase or three-phase, whether the data are collected concurrently or sequentially. That's timing, and really that's, that's um, a key indicator. Your language is expected to reflect that. Priority is something that's better judged when a project is conceived Although sometimes when it's conceived, for example, with only quantitative research questions, it's going to be pretty hard to build the case that you have um, a significant mixed methods piece to it. Or the purpose statement, for example, might reflect primarily qualitative purposes. So priority can be set at the design, but it's mostly judged when projects are over 
partly because they're so unpredictable in the way they unfold. If you're pursuing anything that's complex and you're doing anything but hypothesis testing. If you're clearly testing one or two hypotheses that's quant driven, you're not likely to run into quite the messiness that you do when you combine um, qual and quant questions, but that doesn't account for the messiness of huge data sets. Timing um, to me has been difficult to simplify. I think it helps to think of it in terms primarily of the timing of data collection, but it also relates to um, data analysis. And I separate the two out when the literature does not traditionally separate them out. So timing has been conceived by um, Creswell, a founding voice in the profession, and Plano Clark. And these are the three different um, types of timing, concurrent, sequential, multi-phase. Uh, anytime you go over two clear phases, then you go into the multi-phase research and much research that addresses complex problems is multi-phase. So concurrent design, as the qual and quant data are collected at the same time and generally analyzed separately and brought together at the end. So a classic example of a concurrent design is if you have a survey and you hand it to people and it has close-ended Likert style questions and open-ended qualitative word-oriented questions. You get all your data at one time, one session, you probably analyze the quants uh, first or separately and then the qual. Sequential is a phrase used to apply to studies two phase where you really couldn't do the second phase without the first phase. A classic example of a sequential design is focus groups in the first phase with the purpose of designing an instrument. Second phase, um, you design and test the instrument, you collect the data, and you develop the instrument. We talked about that in the purposes section. Um, really fits a development design, a development purpose that is. Multi-phase get a little messier. The phases are a little hard to distinguish. They can be um, very multi-phase, uh, quite iterative or interconnected. In both the concurrent and sequential design, I think you could argue the connection is generally made at the end, at the inference stage. Whereas in the multi-phase, you're going to see more cyclical interactive engagement between the phases and so the integration of the qual and the quant can occur in multiple phases in multi-phase research whereas i said in sequential um, it tends to be the two phases are brought together at the end when people are drawing conclusions i don't think that's the best use of mixed methods um, i think that's a fairly um, simplistic use of mixed methods, but those labels are tried and true. They've held withstood, withstood the time, the test of time. If you look at the titles of mixed methods publications, you're very likely to see these kinds of language in the titles or the abstract. So in the original language, two phases designs have been distinguished and again this is Creswell Plano Clark this is tried and true this is foundational this language is used across many years many publications so they distinguish between explanatory sequential designs and exploratory sequential designs and really they are simple to distinguish the explanatory begins with quant and moves to qual the exploratory move, uh, begins with qual and moves to quant. You see this design in the chapter exemplar. They started with a randomized control trial. They had some puzzling findings. You may know from earlier videos. I love that. And 
they're trying to understand some puzzling findings, so they went ahead and did a qual study, which may not really have even been planned initially. And certainly there's a good bit of mixed method research that becomes mixed methods because of puzzling findings. So in the textbook, in the table 4.1, I sort of play around with the idea of distinguishing designs not only by when the data were collected, but how they were analyzed. As I mentioned, the initial conceptualization, of course, seems to me to really assume those analyses are conducted quite separately. So I started sort of brainstorming what that would look like and how many potential designs that would produce. Many, many people have done that kind of exploration, have produced these typologies. I'm no longer so enchanted with these kinds of typologies as I was when I first started the book. Um, I think the core set of designs help people imagine mixed method studies, but often as they are executed, particularly when you're talking about studies that are interested in understanding individuals in a context, it often becomes very difficult to distinguish the phases. When, when did the qual start? When did the quant start? When did one end? When did the other? And to me, when you get into sort of that hurricane of mixing that can occur in some sophisticated and good studies, um, I'm not sure that distinguishing the phases is all that helpful. Usually when people do distinguish phases, they accompany it with a flow chart. And I think there's pretty wide agreement that those are very helpful in a mixed method study. They help the reader um, sort of see what has done because sometimes they are not um, a straightforward, you know, I handed out an instrument and here's my results um, kind of thing. So I've grown to have doubts about the um, core design. I'm certainly not the only one. I think they're good for teaching purposes. Uh, I just don't think they really match what you see in the literature, um, which I think find ironically is a little bit ahead. Um, the literature is a little bit ahead when you look at examples in the literature. They seem ahead of the methodological literature to me. So much attention was given, and I guess is still given, to the issue of priority. Um, and it has been traditionally conceived in one of three ways, and I think that there's a fourth one. But I didn't think that when I started the book. Um, it's when I got to looking at examples, it, I felt that these, these original distinctions were not particularly helpful to me. So priority is, has been traditionally conceived in three ways. Um, the quant is given priority, um, the quant methods, the quant results, and certainly there's pretty convincing evidence that at its inception through its middle years that a lot of mixed methods of research was quant driven with an added qual phase that sometimes produced mixed methods. Um, so this is probably where this language has come. Some studies and I think an increasing number emphasis is given to the qual, the principal results um, derived from qual and maybe um, quant data are used to sort the qual results, for instance, by demographics or by some other character. Um, but the qual phase is, is playing the major role in getting to the findings. Little attention has been given to this third category, which is when both the qual and the quant are given equal weight. And they don't, these typologies don't consider the possibility that mi the mixing phase um, may be the, uh, the phase where the findings derive. Um, and that's when I think this new priority may apply. So I get to wondering why is priority important? Why do people talk about it? I'm only aware of one person, and that's Alicia O'Kay Thane, 
who's compared articles by priority and tried to distinguish them. And I think the main reason that um, priority is important is this third bullet here. So if you have a quant-dominated study, then your quality criteria, what you use to judge its quality, is going to have to be quant-dominant. If you have a qual-dominant study where the principal conclusions come from qual, then you're going to want the qualitative expectations for quality, such as trustworthy and credibility. Those are going to be your principal quality criteria. Um, one thing about priority that I will say um, I think is important about it, but I'm not aware others have written this, is that it allows you to trace the conclusions to the source of the data. Um, so it allows you to link, um, make a link. How'd you get to this conclusion? Which data drove it? Is your conclusion merely reflecting quant findings with a little qual tweak? Or is it mostly qual with a little quant tweak? Or in fact, does it come from a type of mixing that I've grown to call dialectical mixing? Something I'm working on now and writing about now. So I propose some um, ways that priority can be judged. Now Creswell and uh, Plano Clark and Shope and Green listed the first four. They said you can tell by title. Um, you can look for reflexivity from the um, authors. They may say we are qualitatively trained, we're quantitatively trained. You can see it in the purpose statement. A nice uh, way that you can do, I've seen people do analysis this way, is the space allocated to qual and quant in the results and discussion questions. I really would add to this the space devoted to qual quant and mixed in the discussion section. This was a 206 article they wrote. I think you could also judge it by the methodological language that's being used, whether they're using qual language and quant language, or quant language. Is it results? Is it findings? Those are clues. And I've said the weight of qual, quant, and mixing in the final conclusion and this is what I'm emphasizing. This is what I think is most important. The bottom line for doing any research is to produce strong conclusions. The argument for mixed methods is you produce stronger conclusions. Um, the assumption is that comes from mixing. So the ability to link mixing to the conclusions is an important quality criteria. So some signals for unequal priority, um, you might be able to see at each of the different phases, the design phase, the inference phase, in the discussion and conclusion, or at, at meta inference. Um, really, you can look at the research questions, you can look at the type of um, language in the research questions, and judge, are these two quant questions and one qual question. Uh, is there a mixing question? So some of priority is reflected in the, in the research questions and the language of the purpose statement. So often you can tell, regardless of how people label it, you can say, oh, they've written that with very quantitative language or they've written that with very qualitative language. I've already talked about how I think you can see it at the inference stage if you see an inference slash conclusion and a meta inference links a qual conclusion and a quant conclusion. And you can judge the role that each of the three pieces, qual, quant, and mix played. Equal priority studies are supposed to be rare. Um, I'm working with a set right now in a, a paper I'm doing about theory where, there are, where they are equal where um, the qual is not, the qual results are, are not dismissed for some reason, the quant results are not dismissed for some reason, um, but yet they're contradictory, and then the drive to explain them. Um, so equal priority is 
the qual and quant play an equal role. Um, maybe there's almost as much space devoted to both of them. There's qual figures and quant figures. That's another way to distinguish them. In the discussion section, sometimes in the findings section, you'll have a section qual results, quant results, integrated results. And it's really considered to be a sign of quality if you have those all those three, not just a section on qual findings and quant findings, but qual findings, quant findings, and integrated findings. And in the chapter exemplar, which I'll talk about in a minute, that's exactly what those authors do. So the chapter exemplar, um, the first one I really got into and the first one that instructed me about mixed methods. So up to then, you know, you have the knowledge of the foundational methodological liter literature and then you have a real life example. Now what's unusual about this exemplar, it's of a randomized control trial where the study is about um, the reporting of domestic or partner violence in emergency rooms by women. And I love it because they're, they tussled with a contradictory finding, which I'll show you in a minute. But this is a very exemplary publication. Um, shows strong knowledge of mixed methods. You can see it in the reference list. A subsequent publication in the following year shows equal credentials in qualitative research um, and they are very clear in using language they call it a two-phase sequential explanatory study because the first phase was the quant data they had screening instruments they came in they uh, administered to women coming into emergency rooms and um, the qual probably unplanned was to explain some very in, in uh, unexpected findings. This is the first exemplar um, that fully embodies the idea of fully integrated because really the notion of integration is woven from the beginning to the end of this project in the design and data collection in data analysis um, and in the way it's presented. It's a well well written, very well written article. So I've said that one way you can um, judge priority, excuse my moving around my webcam photo, and now I have dots on my face, um, is to look at the inference and meta-inference. So an inference is a conclusion. A meta-inference in mixed method research, something that I do not know why we haven't written more about, brings together quant and qual conclusions, sometimes only by linking them. In this case, they're just linking the two conclusions. So the quant data, those screening instruments I mentioned, indicated that women who were had most um, symptoms of violence, who, who had the most physical problems from violence, were the least likely to disclose um, a partner as the source of that violence in the emergency room setting. That was the finding that puzzles them. The qual data gave them the very good reasons. Um, the qual data came from multiple interviews with a small group of women. And the, um, it revealed very good reasons why the women were not disclosing violence. One article emphasized that they worried that the nurses would stigmatize them but a later article, um, a 2014 article, really um, portrays it as almost a very practical conclusion. The women were fearing repercussions of disclosing further involvement with the police, the threat of losing their children, that it would impact their life after they left the emergency room. So actually developed as a very rational decision um, though Catello does not use that language. So here the meta inference is linking them. I think this is mixed priority. I think the equal priority really doesn't do justice to this 
because it is integrated um, throughout all the phases of the research, not only um, at the inference stage, but prior. So I think even though they've used that sequential explanatory design um, and the phases were kept somewhat separate, so not somewhat, they were kept separate, um, and yet there's still this potential here to come to theoretical insight by pursuing um, the sort of puzzling finding that came out of the first phase. So I'm so enthusiastic about this article, or I was at the time, that I did a YouTube video not about it as a design, but about the way the article is laid out, the way the publication is presented. Um, that type, the type of transparency that you see in this publication was very important to me in the selection of exemplars. And this is a fine example of a way to lay out a mixed methods article, even in a randomized control trial, where you often don't see this kind of quality in terms of the way the qual is foregrounded. So here's a link to that video. So in the next chapter, um, we're going to move to the first of three chapters that deliberately focuses on integration, different ways to integrate. And this lovely little um, arch, as you, you know about my arch metaphor, I hope, from previous videos, or maybe touching the book itself, um, was drawn by a young architect named Jenny Blass. I wanted it to be an endnote in the, in the book, but it ended up not being an endnote. But um, I love this little hand-drawn illustration because it uh, brings back the arch metaphor. So thanks for listening to me today. I hope that um, this has been helpful.